Imagine the Nine's Hell Portal space station that send you insane if you enter them. Weird radiation creatures lying waste to awoken space. Imagine Vex-based AI inviting invaders from other galaxies, abandoned weapons of mass destruction and exoclone armies. This is all the juicy lore hidden deep in dead experimental space stations. Stations with secrets so important that they affect the past, present and future of Destiny 2. In this video, I'm going to explore these juicy lore that make us want to play these activities and also some literally insane space stations that you've never heard of. I'll also tell you the reason why Bungie spends millions developing these kinds of raids and dungeons later on. I literally just completed a Vespers host, which is held on a pretty cool looking wreck of a space station over Europa that drew us in with a big secret. What's sending a message out through that massive gate? And how is a time loop involved? Okay, so a time loop was a misdirect by Bungie, but the other secret teased is a big one. It's exactly these kinds of secrets that bring us back to the game, but I'll get back to Vespers. Why so serious? All the best secret experiments gone wrong come from Braytech, where we play some of the best raids and dungeons. Deepstone Crypt is based mostly on the Morningstar station, which was designed by resident sociopath Clovis Bray as a failsafe if clarity control ever posed any danger. It was originally designed to leave orbit and crash into the Braytech research station on Europa and destroy all the work there, if needed. The mystery and lore that came out of this raid set up what we know of Exos and ignited our journey to explore the people of the Witness, whether we knew it at the time or not. It also gave insight into the very foundation of the Vex and their core intention. Each location holds its own experimental AI, super weapon or exo clone gone wrong in some form or another. While similar and look and feel to the Morningstar station, we again return to space to reveal the secrets buried deep in Earth orbiting Seraph station during Season of the Seraph, and then again recently journeying to Europa's Vesper station in episode Revenant. Both being effective vehicles for major story beats, which went down really well with the community and provided some challenging and major lore beats from the outcomes of both. Most significantly, in Vesper's host, with the mystery revelation of the new species of the Lodi, potentially coming in the next major push for Bungie, Operation Frontiers, in 2025, if we were to believe current lore masters. The best mysteries are still unsolved but none so insane as A113. Butthole babies are not something you'd expect to see being manufactured by the Nine, but they keep pumping out strange and wrong creatures once they occupied Kakaidas A113. This space station had a long history of being occupied by many creatures, held at various times by Crota, the Awoken, Dead Orbit, and eventually the Nine. It was so prized because it contained keyhole portals to hell dimensions. These portals inspired the creation of strange creatures and even our beloved necrochasm. The Nine started secret experiments that bore life to super strange creatures, using the portals apparently to make corporeal bodies for themselves. The butthole babies I mentioned before were only one experiment where the five of the nine began using Kakaidas as a laboratory, using the station's third portal to convert their dark matter into regular matter. The nine's two attempts at viable life failed almost immediately, with one being a Frankenstein collection of organs not actually having a poop hole, so it didn't <laughs> last long. The station lies abandoned and off limits to all but an amazing opportunity to reach new dimensions if we ever dare to step into those hell portals. These danger-filled mysteries keep fueling and pulling us back to the game and are so important. Could the core Frankenstein central mystery Destiny 2 be something we've never actually gotten an answer to and is the setting for the final shape itself? The Deo Ex Machina herself, the Traveller. The inside of this one entity has to be one of the most unique, misshapen, fun and wild locations we have ever been given to this date. 
Step by step, as we ventured into the location, we learned more about the central figure of the Traveller. The deep set implications reaching back to fundamental questions we've had about ghosts, the light, and the relationship with darkness. It was these revelations that were as impressive as the gameplay itself and made the entire experience an absolute banger and a joy to play. Not every Frankenstein mystery has been explained and probably some will never be, but one that personally excited me is always the abandoned Awoken space station in the Reef and Mestris, as it makes reference to one of the most talked about creatures that exist in the entirety of Destiny 2 lore, the Aphelion. A creature we know next to nothing about, apart from they exude a specific radiation which attacked the station, leaving it a no-go area to all. These creatures are similar to another species on an ice planet that possessed a light suppressing ability that eventually cost Drifter his entire crew at the edge of the soul system during the Red War. You know what? Of course. Of course it was me that was the one that was in charge of moving the planets on the far left side of the space. And initially it was pure excitement and nerves as it was our first time running the raid and I needed to get this right after the fourth time trying and everyone was depending on me actually understanding the mechanic, keeping an eye on everyone else and doing some level of ad clear in my area. Pressure was on. Bungie sets up these kind of scenarios deliberately, but why? Okay, so pushing entire planets around in the encounter I just mentioned in Root of Nightmares may not immediately have sparked a connection between the witness taking and moving planets and the mechanics I was attempting to accomplish right there, but eventually it did. And this is the delayed realization from lore to game mechanics that makes such an impact. This is a sort of hidden tapestry of connection. Wow. That is so well woven that it really is very easy to miss. But take it from me, it's all there when you go looking for it. That raid hooked us in with a stunning looking location in the light blessed pyramid ship. Challenged by the once again resurrected Nazarek, this time offering us insights into darkness and the witness. Stunning locations that created a great raid and engaging mechanics that changed up dynamics enough to keep players interest fueled and offering something new to the standard raid dynamics. Bungie knows a good thing when they see it, and it is this combination of weird and wonderful that engages the player base, rooted in lore and mystery. There's no shortage of weird space mysteries with monsters and experiments that create mayhem to keep pulling players back to the game. And this is ultimately the reason, because we love it. We love the foreign setting, the danger inherent to being in space and how otherworldly it feels to play in non-terrestrial environments where gravity is different, stakes are higher and potential implications can be much more extreme and alien to us. The mind is triggered, the imagination sparked, and we're not just playing the same kind of standard map that we grow so accustomed to. It is the mystery that inspires innovation and gameplay. And if this wasn't in the game, why would we bother to play an obviously stagnant game? Salvation's Edge would not have been one of the hardest day one raids in the history of the game without the mechanics inspired by lore and the long history of woven mysteries we have been uncovering for the stretch of 10 years of playing the game. If we weren't so invested in the journey and the principal villain, would we really give a flying shit to spend so much time getting to the end just to see what happens? We are suckers to our own curiosity and sense of achievement. Removing these intergalactic mysteries and pulling out the lore that is gifted when the mysteries are answered would topple Destiny into being a simple, basic looter shooter where we question why we even play. But to what end? Separating out the woven depth, magic and deep storytelling that are the basis of every activity, mode, weapon, armor and event would leave the game flat dead and devoid of any real aspiration, sophistication and imagination. The story and wonder of the awe-inspiring locations, the potential of each mystery and the kick of excitement it offers the community 
are the primary reasons we all fell in love with the game all those years ago. And I'd bet it was the same for most players. This kind of game needs the magic of mysteries, whether it be Frankenstein Creatures of the Nine, the experiments wreaking havoc due to Clovis Bray, or the unexpected locations that Darkness has revealed to us. Every DLC has given us some central new idea, location, weapon, and mystery to uncover so we can play and share and throw theories at each other. Pull at the thread of this tapestry and you'd unravel the very motivation to play, get excited, and get angry at Destiny and Bungie for getting us so involved in this universe and really caring about what happens next. All of these amazing locations and unique impactful mysteries at the heart of it are essential for players to keep them invested, but without a central narrative, a primary narrative that hooks the player and keeps them coming back, then all this setup won't be worth the time for any player. In episode Echoes, the central narrative was nowhere near as much of an amazing pull as the hidden lore buried deep in the acts. In the next video, I'll show you what you actually missed out on while playing the main story and the intergalactic battles that could have been so much better than the story we actually got. Check it out next. Wow, this has just been such a pleasure. I, I'm such a lucky boy. I can't wait to go home and 